Solder paste is awesome. Typically you stencil it onto a board, then put all the parts on, and then you put it into an oven where the paste turns into molten metal. But I had an idea. What if as the parts go onto the board, it starts working? Parts of the board start spinning up as you place the parts on. I had this image in my mind of the Lumen PMP running a job, placing LEDs onto a PCB, and as it places them down, they pop up. Little bits of light coming online as it completes the job. So I was looking at some ways to do this, and I discovered Z-Tape. It's tape with a bunch of tiny little metal balls suspended in it. When you place the tape between two objects, the balls crush and make electrical connection between the two things that you're placing together. But only in the z-axis, it doesn't spread in x and y. Breaking Taps has a great video outlining all of this, there's a link in the description if you want to learn more about how it works. So we could take this tape, put it across an entire PCB, and then when we place the parts down, they make that connection in the z-axis and they start working automatically. No need to solder anything. So what I have here is the FTP board for the Lumen PMP. It's just like a test board where you can populate LEDs and resistors to make sure that your lumen's calibrated and everything. But this is gonna be a great thing to just test if things are conducting. I'm gonna put some Z-tape on this board and then try putting resistors and LEDs on it and see if it lights up. It really should, because that's what Z-tape's supposed to do. I have two different kinds of Z-tape, one that I just bought years ago and found in my desk drawer, and then some other stuff that I just bought from Adafruit. All right, let's get some tape on this and then try and put some parts on it. Now we're gonna connect it to power and start smushing some parts into it. 330 ohm resistor. All right, I have it on there and I'm gonna press in and try and make a connection. Okay, so I've pressed in on that resistor. All right, let's try the LED. Nothing, let's try and press on both of them. Oh, no way! <laughs> That's sick! Oh, it's kind of intermittent. I kind of have to apply pressure to both of them at the same time, and even then it's kind of finicky. All right, there we go. I can't let go of either one of them, otherwise the connection breaks. I just want it to stay on. Well, that's disappointing. This is definitely not going to be the thing that I can just have it place a bunch of parts onto the board with the lumen and they magically light up like I want. The data sheet for this tape does say you kind of have to press it really hard and ideally there's a bit of heat and a whole bunch of other processes that help make it a little bit more reliable. Just putting this on a board and having the lumen push a part into it, I don't think is gonna cut it. Damn. If you've ever used E-tape for something and I'm clearly not using it right, please leave a comment and tell me what I'm doing wrong, but it just doesn't seem like this is gonna work super well. I could try a bigger pad where there's more likelihood that some of those balls are gonna crush and connect because you can see from the footage, there's only a handful of them that are actually making a connection for each pad. Maybe I just need bigger pads for this kind of thing or a higher density ball distribution in my Z-tape. Maybe I should just get different tape. Darn, I was hoping this would just work. Well, back to the drawing board. So now we're moving on to plan B, this stuff. This is a conductive acrylic lacquer called Total Ground. This is effectively like an acrylic paint that is conductive. It's like a conductive liquid. This stuff is marketed as like supposed to be EMI, EMF shielding, where you put it into like a paint sprayer and you spray the inside of some kind of enclosure or even like guitars for like shielding the pickup so you don't pick up EMI, EMF kickoff from other devices in the area. They don't tell you exactly what's going on inside of here, but based on the jet black color and the pretty inexpensive price of it, I'm guessing it's probably carbon, either graphite or carbon black. These are both really conductive and pretty affordable and make whatever you put into them jet black. And this stuff is no joke. It is, it is black paint. <laughs> so this is gonna be kind of a different approach, not putting tape across the whole board and placing the parts where they need to go, but like stenciling or like extruding this stuff onto just the pads and then placing the part into this paint, this liquid, and then that makes the connection. There's also this stuff called electric paint from a company called Bear Conductive. Conductive paint, you can buy it from Adafruit. It is way thicker. This is intended to be used to like make circuits and stuff. Like some of the demos that they do with this stuff is making like a capacitive touch keyboard with a makey makey or something along those lines. And it's also thicker. So I have some higher hopes about this like holding parts on a little better. So I'm gonna load some of this into a couple of syringes and try just extruding it out onto the FTP board on the pads and try placing parts and see how that pans out. And hopefully it works a lot better than the Z-tape. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, first up is the total ground. Man, whoa, that dried almost immediately. Holy smokes. It is super runny and it dries so fast. Ah, okay, I'm just gonna ship it. All right, here's the resistor and then the LED. Oh, it's conducting a little bit. I think it just dried too quickly. I'm gonna try and put a little more liquid on here. This is not a clean process. It is conducting, it's just... Oh, it shorted underneath. Wow, that is wild. It dries so fast. That is way finicky. A little bit out, it, it immediately spreads out. Oh wow, it looks like it's getting brighter too. It probably gets more conductive as it dries. Goop, goop, place. All right, let's see if it gets brighter. Cause I think it probably will based on how the first one went. Cause now the first one's really bright. Well, it works. It's just really hard. You have to go so fast. All right, now let's try the bare conductive ink. Oh, this is so much easier to control. This is like closer to solder paste. Whoa. All right, it's not quite as bright, but also maybe it just needs to dry like the other stuff. Cool. All right, let's try one more. Yeah, and there it is. There we go. It just needs a little press in. Oh, that's so cool. All right, this actually works kind of okay. The total ground, really, really thin lacquer stuff is so hard to control and it dries like crazy fast. You have to put it on and immediately place the part on there. I got a couple on there pretty good, but they're like not clean at all. It's just, it's only kind of chance that it didn't run and like short uh, underneath the LED or something. The ink is really good though. It's really easy to control. They also both get more conductive as they dry. I could see the current on my voltmeter slowly going up as the resistance dropped as the solvents and the water evaporated out of both of them, which is so cool. <laughs> this is so sweet. Look how easy it is to break one of these parts off. So I'm just gonna gently tap this resistor with my tweezers. And just like that, I like barely put any force on it. However, the bare conductive stuff is quite a bit stronger. I can still pull it off if I really try, but it puts up way more of a fight than the lacquer. This is cool, this works. This actually works. Okay, so here's the game plan. I think this conductive ink is good enough to test this out on an actual job on the lumen. So I'm going to lightning fast, put a bunch of this bare conductive ink on a subset of the pads on the FTP board and then run a lumen job and see what happens. <laughs> see if it actually has it light up as they go on. Oh, and with the board powered too. Like I wanna see them light up as it places them. These parts coming up, lighting up as they get placed onto the board. All right, I'm gonna clean this board off and get the lumen set and Let's see if this works. Let's see if it does it. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's just the sickest thing you've ever seen. As they go down, blink, the light comes on. Like, ah, oh, I can't get over it. It's so cool. So this was like my third attempt of running the job. The first couple times I was a little too slow with putting the ink on and it dried just a little bit and the connection wasn't great. You can actually even see it in the video. The very last part that was placed, it kind of flickers in and out. It wasn't like really fully seated. It dried too much. This was the second attempt I think and this was quite a lot quicker. But even then you could see kind of varying brightness between each of the LEDs. What's interesting though is after it dries, they're all really consistent in their brightness. So it must be something about Honestly, I don't know. I'm not sure why. So freaking cool. I mean, come on. It also is really incredible how much more conductive the ink becomes after it dries. As soon as this job was done, I checked the current on my power supply and it was like 45 milliamps. And now I'm pulling like 88 milliamps. So almost twice as much, almost half the resistance as what it was in its liquid form, which makes sense because you're evaporating out all the non-conductive stuff as it dries and you're left with mostly the graphite, carbon black, whatever they're putting in it. It's so cool, it's so cool. I wanna keep exploring with this. I 
I don't think this as it is, is quite robust enough to actually have an application somewhere. I think there's two main problems. One, it dries too fast. It needs to have a longer stencil life. It needs to have a longer time on the PCB before it starts to dry out and it won't wet to the surface of a component. Also, it's not an adhesive, it's a paint. Even though it's a lot better than the total ground in terms of like stickiness, this still isn't great. I want it to be like a glue. I want it to be an adhesive. So in the next video, we're gonna play chemist and we're gonna mix our own <laughs> and see if we can get it to have the properties that are gonna make this more feasible, more useful as an actual method of connecting components. Of course, solder paste and a reflow oven are always gonna be the best thing for a long-term solution for a reliable, solid connection between your component and your PCB. But if there's a way that you don't have to have a reflow oven, if there's a way you don't even really have to stencil it, I'm thinking extruding this out in little bits on the pads right before the parts get placed, that is so such a lower barrier to entry to starting to play around with a pick and place in electronics. So this certainly won't replace soldering, but it is pretty cool and probably pretty useful in its own right. If you have ideas about which type of adhesive will act the least like an insulator when fully loaded with some kind of conductive additive, please let me know in the comments. I am not a materials guy. I have bought like every kind, every type, every chemistry of adhesive I could find and I've started running some experiments to see how conductive they are when they dry and all this kind of stuff. The next video is gonna be sick. All these different custom formulations and testing all the conductivity and how long before it dries and Oh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be really good. Also, if you did not catch it, we recently released the V4 Lumen PNP. This is what you saw in the whole video. It is a super fast, super reliable and accurate desktop pick and place. It's great for running prototype runs of your boards in house or even doing full production like we do. You can go check it out at opula.io and there's a link in the description. It's pretty rad. And now apparently it makes boards without solder paste. <laughs> All right, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. What do they do? What do the balls do, Steven? <laughs>